Hi, my name is Douglas Horn. I'm from Goodblock, and I'm excited to have an opportunity to tell you about the decentralized storage system we've created called DStore. DStore is truly revolutionary decentralized storage, uh, and I hope to explain to you in the next few minutes why that is. It really comes as no surprise to anyone today that cloud storage absolutely dominates computing. One measure says that 72% of global organizations will migrate from on-premises data centers to cloud storage in just the next three years. And we've seen since 2017 when cloud storage really started getting traction, it was worth about $30 billion a year. Uh, by 2023, that's expected to be over $100 billion a year. So it's radical growth. And we're all aware of this, right? Because everything is moving to the cloud. But cloud computing is operated by centralized companies. And uh, just a few dominate the industry. Amazon, Google, Microsoft. These servers do go down on occasion. And when they do, it takes with them any service or files that they host. While global outages are rare, regional outages are relatively common. Also, these services are easily blocked by repressive governments. Cloud computing also requires users to trust the companies hosting their files not to change or delete them. I know that seems ludicrous, but frankly, you're really just trusting these files to the companies who are running. Uh, it would be very difficult to detect altered files on centralized cloud hosting. And in fact, we know that this happens from time to time. Decentralized file storage offers a solution where trusting the hosting company is not required. There's no longer that single point of failure. Costs can also be reduced. However, solutions to date, such as IPFS, which stands for Interplanetary File System, suffer from slow access times and there's a risk of file impermanence. Some of the problems with IPFS are that there's no clear directory for where a given file is hosted within the mesh of storage node operators. So a user's computer may be searching several servers until they find the file that they need. IPFS doesn't have any real incentive for node operators to run higher infrastructure, and that contributes to these speed problems. IPFS also doesn't handle forward replication of files, meaning that they can disappear from the system. We call this the file permanence problem. Also, many IPFS solutions must use a specific cryptocurrency token housed on its own specific blockchain. And this is a UX problem for many. DStore is a way to combine the best of both worlds between centralized storage and IPFS. It's a revolutionary new form of decentralized file storage that offers lower costs than centralized cloud storage, improved file permanence, access times rivaling centralized cloud storage, trustless environment to operate in, protection from file tampering, DDoS protection, and even some resiliency against government blockage. DStore gets these lower costs of IPFS but it uses intelligent routing and incentivized high-end infrastructure, along with a few other methods, to do this at the speed of traditional cloud storage. There are even some advantages that neither IPFS nor traditional cloud services offer, like our unique approach to routing that offers built-in distributed dial service protection and uh, perhaps the best ability to, available to deliver files around government blockages. So this is another look at how DStore stacks up against IPFS and traditional cloud solutions. We think this is a technology that simply surpasses the current alternatives. We see DStore as a foundational technology of the new internet. Each of these elements is going to be crucial. Trustlessness, tamper-proof files, high-speed delivery, high data persistence, resiliency against DDoS, and increasingly in today's world, resiliency against government censorship. Only DStore is able to deliver this. We spent a lot of time on it, and now we're patenting our approach. Given all the roadblocks we encountered getting here, uh, I really expect DStore is going to have this feel to ourselves for quite some time. Well, how can DStore be cheaper than traditional cloud computing? Don't they have a massive scale to work with? Well, it's true they do. The way that AWS or Azure works is that they build the highest quality tier one data centers and store your data on a SAN, which is designed to never lose files or access. These are like four nines, five nines data centers, but that uptime is extremely expensive to maintain. DStore takes the opposite approach. Our operators will mostly be using cheaper tier three and tier four data centers. They will be utilizing cheap drives without the multiple protection layers needed to ensure that a drive never goes down or loses files under any circumstances. So within the DStore system, we actually expect that drives may go down all the time, but we have so many copies within the system that it doesn't matter. There's always another copy. And when files are served, they're often copied on a new servers in the process, ensuring that data permanence. IPFS takes a similar approach, which is why they can offer cheap storage, but they don't incentivize faster infrastructure through more pay. And they also don't use the 
for replication of files that we use, which makes the situation so that sometimes data just disappears on an IPFS system. Another advantage of this approach is greater geographic diversity. The best practices for AWS recommend storing data in two different regions for geographic diversity. But DStore goes way farther. We're storing data in numerous regions around the world. That first reduces latency times, but it also protects against cataclysmic loss. Through DStore's unique approach, for which again, we're applying for a patent, to a balancing requests, directing requests, and distributing files with forward replication, DStore can rival the access speeds of traditional cloud storage providers. Unlike traditional cloud storage provider, no single entity controls the operations of DStore. No one organization can shut off operations or access. Like IPFS, DStore files are accessed through a file hash, which is a resource locator, which is the result of a hashing the file's actual data. So the file name or resource locator for all the data is unique, as unique as a Bitcoin private key. If you change just one character in a file, you'll have a total totally different file hash will not be found using the previous version of the file. In fact, the previous version will be found. So there's absolutely certainty that any given file is identical to the one that was originally stored. This is not something that can be guaranteed by centralized cloud service providers. Files cannot be changed without changing the file hash. Files also can't be discovered accidentally any easier than, say, a Bitcoin private key can be discovered. The numbers are just vast. So that is to say, they simply can't be discovered without having that resource locator. Now, DStore can store files of any size, and the system's capacity can grow to any size with no upper limit. We recently live demoed on viewers' own devices in Silicon Valley at a conference re- the other day, uh, a few weeks ago. DStore, we showed it delivering files instantaneously. We demoed streaming audio and video using HLS segmentation without any lagging. Uh, And we resolved website landing pages and links that were actually hosted on DStore. The the DStore demo page is hosted on DStore. And we're currently working with select developers and storage operators in our alpha program. And we're very happy to demo the tech for anyone who's interested. DStore can serve any use case currently served by traditional cloud storage with the advantages of lower cost, improved document retention, and improved access. And it does all of this without requiring any new network infrastructure. This uses existing network infrastructure, which is quite important. So How do we plan to go to market with DStore? Well, even though cloud storage will soon be over a $100 billion per year global market, it's dominated by some of the world's biggest corporations, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Even with our very clear advantages, it would be wise for us to find a market niche where DStore could absolutely shine without the competition and then build from there. The most accessible initial market is with decentralized applications and blockchain technology. We can easily address this market. We are developers in this world ourselves already. We know that blockchain dApps have an absolute need as it goes straight to their mission, this decentralization. And currently, no suitable alternative exists. So far, users have actually given dApps a bit of a pass for not using decentralized storage, but only because no viable solutions are around. But DStore changes that, and it will no longer be acceptable soon for dApps to store on AWS. Dapps are going to need to go to decentralized storage. Addressing this niche will give DStore an opportunity to gain traction as it markets itself to take market share from the big guys in the larger markets, like small and medium-sized businesses, enterprise, government, and more. We are aware that it's going to take some time for the general market to embrace the value of decentralization as the blockchain market and DAP market does. Decentralized applications seek to revolutionize multiple industries from finance to logistics to gaming. Decentralized apps remove central control from applications using distributed ledger technology to create trustless execution of autonomous smart contracts. Due to the problems with current decentralized storage, these dApps must adopt suboptimal, let's say, approaches to storing any data over a few kilobytes. So what are the current alternatives? What are dApps using right now to store data that doesn't fit well directly on a blockchain? which frankly is most of that data. Well, they could avoid using file storage altogether. That's great, but it really limits the usefulness of any DAP. They could store files on IPFS, which is decentralized and low cost, but the data retrieval time is going to be slow. Plus, files can disappear. That's not a good solution. DAPs could store files on traditional cloud services, but this creates a dependency on centralized services, and it really violates the promise that these DAPs bring. Now, of these, using traditional cloud storage is really by far the most common. Developers know that they're ignoring their mission and misrepresenting their apps, but there's been no choice. And frankly, we all understand that choosing speed and functionality is the way that we need to work to get users and bring them on board. But 
D store is going to offer all this plus decentralization of their files. So we feel that this is a solution that people are really eager for in the DAP world. So the blockchain and DLT world is built on the expectation that decentralized applications are poised to replace their centralized counterparts. Not overnight, but probably faster than most of those companies expect. In fact, one of the big reasons this hasn't actually taken off yet is that any serious app uses a lot of data. You just can't run a decentralized music app without a way to store the music files, right? So some of the new types of decentralized versions of today's apps include things like a decentralized Dropbox or a backup service like Backblaze, a decentralized version of a video hosting platform like Vimeo or podcast or music platform like SoundCloud. Document tracking and DNA management also seem like obvious candidates. But there are also a lot of other types of blockchain-powered dApps that don't have such clear counterparts. For example, blockchain is expected to revolutionize transparency around supply chain, tokenize the ownership of real estate, and verify the provenance of food and luxury goods. Every one of those things requires documents at some point. Bills of lading, lab reports, inspection reports, organic certifications. None of these are easily stored on blockchains themselves. And they're all crucial for these types of dApps to work. So we plan to partner with developers seeking to build on the DStore platform and leverage this massive opportunity. Of course, many applications will be built independently, but we also seek the opportunity for DStore to help accelerate the efforts of different companies in working with these platforms through strategic partnerships and revenue sharing agreements. There have been other projects working on decentralized storage, of course, but they have failed to produce the speed, resiliency, and reliability of DStore. Despite years of development, none of these have provided a functional product for providing instant access to data that DStore has. While once promising, these projects suffer from the slow development common among token-funded decentralized development projects. There are just a lot of legitimate reasons why these projects stall. It's not their fault. We have had to work through a lot of these same issues and they often seemed insurmountable. Part of the problem is that IPFS, which is core to most of these projects in one form or another, has deep flaws in terms of security, forward replication, and speed. The DStore developers completely rewrote the IPFS technology to remove these performance and security problems. We have our own API. While DStore does still use some familiar components from IPFS, like the file hash, under the hood, it's very different. DStore uses a simple economic model. DStore users are mostly dApps who provide services to their own end users, like a decentralized Dropbox or SoundCloud. Their use end users don't really want to know the details about how those files are stored. So these dApps pay DStore a small one-time fee for each file added to the system, and then a periodic fee for all the files that were served during that period of time. This is the same way that AWS prices their S3 services, but much lower. DStore collects these fees and retains some of them, spending for ongoing development, marketing, user support, legal, and of course, profits to investors. The balance goes to pay the individual operators of storage nodes on the network. They are paid a pro rata percentage of the income based on how much data they serve during that period. Because higher performance operators are given more opportunity to serve files by DStore's intelligent routing system, they have a strong economic incentive to provide excellent infrastructure and to offer nodes in diverse geographic locations, which uh, keeps the system operating at high efficiency. Actual file access is tracked and reported transparently to reduce system gaming by operators. Using DStore will be almost an identical user experience as using traditional cloud services. Most end users will interact with DStore through an app interface. For example, like a Dropbox, Backblaze, YouTube, SoundCloud, but the decentralized versions of these. Apps will uh, using DStore uh, will access it with an API key or a blockchain account key. They'll interact with DStore through an API or through the console app. The apps will pay for the service with the same model used by traditional cloud service providers like AWS. And we will be offering service level agreements once the beta testing is completed to open up to the enterprise and small and medium-sized business markets. DStore is up and running. We're nearing the end of our alpha release where the operator mesh is built and the alpha version of DStore is available. By January, we will enter the first phase of our beta release. This expands the mesh with more operators and brings in more development partners. We are seeing a lot of interest in the platform, and so we are onboarding developers in smaller batches so we can fully serve them and aid their development. It's natural to expect that these early developers will be the ones who are turning out the first decentralized Dropboxes and SoundClouds. We see this as a great opportunity for us to work together and build a lot of value.
conservatively, we should reach the final stage of the beta by May, and we're likely to remain there for an extended period of time just to really nail the service for all users. But by that time, the system will be operating and we'll be storing data and running the service revenue model. Actually, that'll all start from the start of beta one in January. So as a quick recap, DStore is a foundational technology of the new internet. It's necessary, but so far missing piece in the move to decentralized apps. It also offers clear advantages for users of traditional cloud storage in terms of cost, resiliency, tamper-proof. Compared to other attempts to decentralize storage, DStore offers faster access, better data permanence, and a familiar economic model. DStore will be an economic engine for an entire new class of decentralized applications. Thanks very much. I look forward to talking to people who have interest in DStore. This is a fast-moving project. We're excited to share it with everybody. I thank you for your time and watching this presentation.